Dear Mr. Sundari, uh, welcome to the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung in New York. Just a quick information for our audience. You are a member of the House of Representatives of Indonesia for more than 13 years, since mm -hmm. 2004. You are a member of the Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle, the party of the President of Indonesia, uh, Joko Widodo. In your political work, you have a focus on human rights and the freedom of religions and belief. For example, you are vice chair of uh, ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights and a member of the Pancasila Caucus in the Indonesian uh, Parliament, a group of parliamentarians which focuses on the freedom of religion mm -hmm. and belief. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sundari, you came to New York in order to attend a meeting of an all-female group of parliamentarians to take part in a conference at the sidelines of the General Assembly mm -hmm. of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. This group had been organized by IPP4, the International Panel of Parliamentarians for the Freedom of Religion or Belief and had the support of the new Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung. The title of the program is Freedom of Religion or Belief and Gender Equality, Positive Synergies. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us briefly about the visit so far? Mm -hmm. What have been the main topics during the different meetings and what have been the key insights you gained during the discussions here in New York? Actually, uh, before answering the questions, I just want to inform that actually I was uh, one of the founder of that caucus Pancasila, and I established that when uh, there was uh, accidents in which the group of radicals in Indonesia mm -hmm. attacks a group of pro democracy, who uh, at that time are focusing on the uh, minority groups. Uh, I think uh, they are advocating for Ahmadiyah group at that time. And uh, since then, then uh, people are asking us uh, to dismiss this caucus because we still uh, need it, especially when we realize that uh, in Indonesia we are facing the strengthenings of intolerance group. Mm -hmm. And I think they're right. That's why then until now, since 2008, until now we have this and we have this caucus and in fact uh, there are some other people also wants to join, not only MPs. Mm -hmm. That's why then we ex extend the network, uh, also reach out to the minorities groups uh, who are the victims of the violence and also the civil society groups who are working on the on the same issue, the freedom for religions and beliefs. And I'm so happy when uh, two years ago, uh, IPPF uh, contacted me. It means like, uh, yes, this is uh, something that uh, I can get uh, more energy, not only at the level national, but also at the regional mm -hmm. and even the global level. So. Uh, joining IDPF is really getting more network, more energy, more knowledge, more also uh, sources of uh, any help that uh, we need. For instance, like coming here, uh, when uh, fin finally uh, EPPF brought up the issue whether is there any linkages between women's rights and uh, freedoms for religions and belief. Yes, there are, because somehow, as a feminist, uh, I learned that uh, women are the most fragile groups and they are uh, having the potential to be a victims of uh, multi-subordinations yeah? mm -hmm. uh, as in the economic sense and also in the religion uh, sense. And what's disturbing me right now uh, in Indonesia, for instance, uh, the NGOs working on the radicals group, uh, they report to me. You know, it's so difficult to de-radicalize this uh, deportant from ISIS because now we're having uh, more or less uh, 500 deportants from Syria. Returnees. Okay. Uh, Returnees because uh, Turkey sent back yeah. uh, those uh, Indonesians who want to join the terrorist group, I call it. And now they send back to Indonesia. And 78% uh, of this returnee uh, are women and children. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. And uh, we learned that actually the women is the most persistent actor that refuse and also uh, it seems like they have the hardest block to be reach out and also to be uh, open up again. Even the husband follow the uh, wife and when I ask why is that uh, and now we understand why the terrorist group ta are targeting women now as a call for recruiting new members. That's why uh, knowing the connections between women and the uh, tolerance group in which we understand that this tolerance is not tolerance to other religions is really a key here. Mm -hmm. And uh, on in the, at the same time, we understand whenever this intolerance group attack or even uh, preoccupied uh, society, then the women can be the most uh, vulnerable victims. So we have two situations like this. If the women joining the terrorist group, they are the most persistent people that can be radicalized. But once they are in the victims group, they are the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to uh, to learn about the connections between freedoms of religions and uh, the status of women. So, so you are trying actually to target both uh, groups: those who are the, the women who are victims, yeah. but also the women uh, who have been part of uh, a group of ISIS or yeah, another yeah. terrorist group and mm -hmm. are returning to your country. How do you try to target through our network? The company, okay. uh, because we are networking with uh, many civil society, and some of them now they are working uh, with this uh, returning from the uh, from uh, Syria mm -hmm. and, and they rep they uh, send a report to us and asking for help for instance like please reach out the ministry for social uh, because uh, they don't provide help and so far the help is only designed for uh, children mm -hmm. not the women okay. where in fact then we found out that after having a consultation and also discussions with them, we know that actually the women is the key okay. uh, among the family. That if then you can uh, radicalize these women, it will be easier to influence other member of family. I see. So I see that, that you support the idea that uh, for the f uh, freedom of religion or belief mm -hmm. and women r women's rights are mutually reinforcing. Yes. If you look at the United Nations, what what do you think could the United Nations do better to to also uh, promote this uh, development? Yeah, I think I just learned uh, yesterday from uh, our discussions. The UN itself is having problem. Uh, in which that uh, they are uh, they are considering there are two groups that cannot communicate each other. The group which uh, considers yes we must take into account the religious group, mm -hmm. but the other group which is very secular tend to uh, just to make distance and no because we are uh, respecting the freedom for religions then we don't need to uh, take into account this, religi re this religious group because we want to treat everybody not based on the mm -hmm. uh, primordial factors including uh, religions. Somehow this doesn't help me in Indonesia because the identity, now we cannot uh, blind ourselves that okay, we will treat you regardless of your religion. Mm -hmm. We cannot do like that. So the political identity uh, is really integrated uh, or even we can say that uh, most of Indonesian's uh, society now and uh, they consider themselves that their political identity is really linked to what religions they believe. And, and the, in this case Indonesia is a very special example mm -hmm. since Indonesia 
is a predominantly Muslim mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. but also at the same time a uh, religiously very inclusive uh, mm -hmm. society. Would you say that the Muslim world should have a closer look at the Indonesian model or uh, is there anything the world, Muslim world as well as uh, beyond, uh, could learn uh, from the Indonesian example because you are so uh, inclusive in your approach? Yeah, I think somehow we can prove that uh, being a Muslim majority country uh, we can embrace universal values, especially the democratic values. And we have shown this for years, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, up until now, for instance, I'm so happy that even though uh, Indonesia is predominantly Muslims, we don't have conflict such mm -hmm. as other, uh, other Muslim majorities country in the world, yeah. And this is not an easy and uh, we can say, oh, it's impossible. We must work on this. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for this last 10 years, somehow, we are witnessing that these radical groups who try to want to divide us using the religions and politicize the religions is uh, getting stronger. And uh, especially when we employ the uh, regional authority in which we have uh, direct elections at every level, district, provincial and mm -hmm. also a national one, um, there is a tendency and getting stronger this and especially uh, in the recent local election in Jakarta uh, how then uh, this group is using uh, religions f to meet their political goals mm -hmm. to win the elections and uh, it happens in the beginnings of and uh, maybe 10 years back when we were shocked when uh, suddenly we are confronted with uh, hundreds almost 400 something local regulations in which actually a contains of formalizations of religions there even though we have our constitution mm -hmm. which is not based on any religions but suddenly uh, because of euphoria yeah, uh, after we succeeded in uh, pushing the democratization at that mm -hmm. time the religion's identity becomes political identity and all over places in Indonesia. But uh, I'm so happy that uh, that tendency is slowing down mm -hmm. now uh, because after our government uh, remind everybody we have Pancasila, mm -hmm. we have constitutions and we embrace and uh, as a protection of all religions here even though majority we are Muslim but we don't use Islam as our base yeah, but uh, we can use Pancasila as our principle. Could, could you just explain a little bit about Pancasila because that's mm, probably not everybody knows about it. Oh yeah, before developing constitutions, uh, we are talking about uh, the political process before independence actually. Uh, there was a committee uh, in, which the in which the portfolio was uh, to prepare uh, independence of the uh, Indonesia and the agenda at that time is what are the principles in case we can get the independence mm -hmm. so the founding fathers uh, had a meeting a uh, big meeting that invite every representative from uh, different races different islands and uh, and try to come up with that agenda single agenda and Sukarno, the first president, later on, uh, give a speech that if then we, we are independent, we will uh, base on the five principles. Mm -hmm. That's why then we call it Pancha Sila. Pancha is five, uh, Sila mm -hmm. is principle. The first is uh, belief in God. So we don't follow Pakistan. We don't follow also Turkey, who is a secular. But we have our own system, belief in God. Second is humanity, third is uh, nationalism, and fourth is democracy, and uh, fifth is uh, social democracy. Mm -hmm. And these five uh, were agreed by all the founding fathers and founding mothers at that time. And after independence, we put it in our constitutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are so happy because 
none of the religions against this five principle. But at the same time also, we can also uh, unite all differences among us. That's why then when uh, we are facing the uh, exclusive movements and also uh, this group who wants to push Islam as uh, to be a principle mm -hmm. to replace Pancasila, then our governments uh, strengthen this to be, uh, yes, we have already Pancasila, now we must mainstream Pancasila into our life. So in Pancasila helps actually also the to different religions that are also living in, in Indonesia to live in peace. Yes, it's, uh, it's really guarantee mm -hmm. that uh, every uh, religion can be put together and live in harmony. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, somehow we can silence and also cool, cooling down all the efforts of this uh, majority group who claim to be uh, the majority group that entitled mm -hmm. to us for using Islam as our principle. And does Pancasila also pushes or favors uh, uh, women rights? Oh, it is because in the principle of uh, humanity, uh, we respect the equality, not only based on gender, but also based on beliefs is mm -hmm. on religions and etc. So uh, the minority groups uh, must be saved under this second principle, mm -hmm. humanity. Okay, very good. Uh, Ms. Sundari, one final question. You visited New York during the first week of the UN General mm -hmm. uh, Assembly. Many people actually say it is a kind of crazy week here. Mm -hmm. uh, so many heads of states, mm -hmm. prime ministers, mm -hmm. foreign uh, ministers are coming here together in, in New York. What is your main takeaway from experiencing the United Nations during this special week? Of course we are happy because uh, back home uh, we put uh, UN as a, okay we have UN, UN we can uh, rely on uh, the conventions that uh, can protect our rights uh, back there whenever we are facing conflict actually. Mm -hmm. So usually then uh, we remind everybody we have human rights principle. And uh, please uh, hold this uh, as a, a way or tool to solve the conflict or the dispute there. And when I came here and I met my uh, foreign minister here mm -hmm. and we have chat before coming uh, in here and in fact, she was the one who helped me to get uh, American visa. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, I remind her also uh, not to uh, really undermine the human right because uh, he is so busy and he's focusing on the broad things and said, uh, sometimes uh, she forgot that uh, yes, we have instruments that we ratified it, mm -hmm. uh, but okay, why don't we talk? Why don't we di dialogue? Yeah, of course, dialogue can solve, but in what pace? If everybody just neglect the human right or even the law, then uh, what kind of dialogue will be mm -hmm. end? That's why then, please, uh, we must stick on the uh, convention that we have ratified. And in addition to that, yes, we have also uh, domestic regulation, domestic law, and uh, these instruments can enrich and make our dialogue to be more effective and efficient. Ms. Sundari, thank you very much for this interview. And actually, it was the first interview that we conducted here That's at the uh, CAS in New York. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>